hello welcome again to another video in this video I'll show you how we use arrays and why do we need arrays so for this I'm just going to build a simple uh, console app I know we have been doing forms app but little console app will make it a little bit straightforward so let me I'll just call this array demo I've actually created a previous project all right so now let's think about a case where I tell you to write a program to ask uh, the user for three numbers and then the program is going to compute the sum right so pretty straightforward so first we'll ask uh, console dot read line Uh, we'll actually just say console dot print sorry console dot write say enter number one and then I'll say int number one is equal to convert dot to int because we have to uh, console remember it's always a string input and we are using strong type casting here so int num1 is equal to convert dot int 32 now all right here we need this all right I'm just going to copy paste this code for the second number and the third number so enter number two enter number three so now that's all we have to do and then we create a new sum variable and we say num1 plus num2 plus num3 Let's follow a convention here and then we will print this out sum is and then we say now we have to convert this to string so we'll use the two string function that is available inside dotnet for all uh, variables that we have created all right let's run uh, one thing we forgot is to just add a console which we have been doing is console dot read line or we'll just say console dot read so that the screen remains open all right now let's run this code runs enter number one I'll enter 20 number 2 I'll enter 30 this enter 40 sum is 90 40 plus 30 is 70 plus 20 90 pretty straightforward now let's say we want to extend this program and have five numbers or let's do seven numbers you need to ask the user seven numbers so following the same thing we will repeat the code here so this will be number four number five number six number seven and now sum is equal to uh, number six and number seven all right let's run this now we are taking seven numbers as input and this program is giving the sum of seven numbers just to make it a little easier to enter I'll just go with the simple single digit numbers three four five six seven eight nine so the sum is 42 9 plus 8 17 23 29 34 38 oh, sorry 9 uh, 17 and this is 24 30 35 39 and 42 pretty straightforward now let's say I ask you to do 10 numbers or even let's increase it to do 100 numbers so as you can see you have to copy paste and repeat these lines like 100 times if you are entering 100 numbers and asking them for the sum similarly this line here will contain all the 100 numbers so maybe you can still do it but what about if I ask you to do thousand numbers or ten thousand numbers 
So you can see where this is going, right? I mean, you'll have to copy paste all these lines of codes for each number. I'm adding two lines of code. For 10,000, I'll have 20,000 lines of code. For 100,000 numbers, I'll have 200,000 lines of code. I mean, at that level, the code is pretty much not maintainable because remember, the more lines of code you have, the more difficult it is to maintain and it's really not sustainable. And then we add another complexity. What if I ask you to ask the user how many numbers the user wants to enter and based on that you compute the sum. Uh, now you can run a loop inside here to do that. So you can ask the number and then compute the sum multiple number of times. Or we can use arrays. So first let me show you two solutions that are possible here. So I'm going to remove or just leave this code as is. Just we'll comment this out. Just move it outside of the console function so that it becomes a little easier. So this is here. So now or what we can do is first create our favorite uh, loop variable. We'll say i loop. Now remember in this case we are just going to repeat this where we are asking for seven lines i loop is equal to zero i loop is less than seven and we say i loop and then you copy this enter number and just we can say i loop and let's add actually the braces here so we are printing enter number this and then asking the user for the number and we should take uh, declare int num1 outside the loop or we can leave it as is just add another value called sum and then at the end of this we say sum is equal to sum plus num1 and at the end we can actually print the result console dot write line and say sum is uh, again I used it with a capital S just trying to be consistent here we'll use small sums here all right now let's run this code enter number zero or well, obviously I index started from zero so we'll enter one two three four five six seven eight although sum is already given as 28 now we have cons considerably reduced a number of lines here now important thing here is that even if you ask for 10 numbers all you have to do is increase this number to 10 but the number of lines are going to remain the same so this is the magic of loops now what if I tell you that once you enter all the numbers you have to print them out again and display the user that some of those numbers that are printed out is going to be the sum that you computed how are you going to do that? So this is a very good use case where arrays come into play. So first let's see how we can do the numbers here. Uh, we have to print it after entering all numbers. So there's absolutely no way because the only number we have stored is num1. this by console now num1 is coming as an error because you have to declare it outside the loop because if we declare num1 inside the loop it can only be called from inside uh, inside the loop so now it's more for global function we should initialize it 
a, sorry, a global variable. So now you can see numbers are uh, this, but it only has one number, and we can check that. Again, enter number zero. So numbers are seven, so it's printing the last number that we entered. Just add a little space there. So how do we fix this? How do we say that we have to go back, uh, capture all the numbers, maintain a record of all the numbers, and then print the numbers out? I mean, really, there's no way you can do this. You can do it here by printing num1, num2, num3, num4, num5, num6, num7 again. But in this case where you are using a loop, that's not possible. This is where arrays come into picture. Now before I delve into and show you the code how arrays are structured, let's look at some basic things, right? I'm just going to use paint program here. When you declare a variable called, let's say, int, sorry, pardon my writing here. Uh, let me actually just rub this out and make it a little bit more clear. Ah, just start from new. So I'm just going to use the text box. When I say int a and I declare this uh, variable, what does it actually do? Now when you compile the code, you are basically telling the computer or the operating system of that machine to create some space. I'm trying to remove this thing here to create a space for a variable a. So if this is your memory, let me draw the memory here. So if this is the, your memory, it has, you know, your memory will have about a few megabytes or gigabytes of space depending on your computer. When you say A, remember we discussed earlier that INT composes of 32 bits or basically four bytes because each byte has eight bits. This will create a space about 30, or let's just use bytes here. it's going to create about four bytes of space in the memory as soon as you declare INTA. Now what about if we create another command here called INTB? That will create another four bytes of space. So if I go back here four bytes of space have been allocated in memory again. So this is A and this is B. So similarly, if you declare INTC, it keeps on adding space here. With arrays, you follow the same concept, except with arrays, you can use the same variable name as here to refer to different values. So here A refers to this and B refers to this. But if you use A as an array, well, let's actually create a value called C here. If C is an array, Both the values, which means which are assigned to A and B, can be represented by C alone. So C can actually represent both this and this. And C is going to take the index of the value. So if I type C0, it's going to refer to A if I type C1. Again, remember our indexes start from zero. It refers to B. So we are using a single variable called C, but we have to give an index to show which value we are interested in. So C1, sorry, C0 is equal to A and C1 is equal to B. 
this is essentially the core concept of arrays now let's go back into our code and see how we declare an array so I am to declare an integer array so just like with everything in C sharp I'm going to declare an array called C give this and say new int and just give the size of the array so in this case our array will have seven values so I've created an array called C that will store seven values now what I have to do is rather than using num1 I can actually comment this cover I don't need num1 anymore I'm going to use C and in C I'm going to specify the index of the value so the beauty of arrays is that you can use it with a loop and it will act as different values because otherwise as we saw the only way you can do this is creating different variable names for each one of them and this way it's not really scalable so with arrays you actually define a single variable and then combine it with a numeric value that you can get from a loop or anywhere else to store your numbers now if I go here and I just say I loop It's going to print that another benefit is we actually don't have to do this computation we can do it at the end because all the values we are entering are being stored now how do we print this our original use case was that we should input the numbers compute the sum but before displaying the sum we need to print all the numbers again so again I will just execute this loop again let's go and copy this and say here console dot right line numbers that are entered numbers that were entered is essentially this and then I'm going to say numbers are and I'm going to print each number in its separate line all you have to do is just call C with the index and convert it to string and the numbers will be printed now let's see how this works one two maybe five six seven eight numbers that were entered numbers are one twenty five six seven eight nine one and the sum is fifty seven so this way we can store any number of values using a single variable name and a different index the indexing actually allows that va uh, variable to be stored and called from inside a loop now this is what we call as a one-dimensional array in the second part of this video I will show you how we can create a multi-dimensional array now for the sake of simplicity we will only go to two-dimensional arrays but it's possible to create any number dimensions of arrays and but that again adds to the complexity and should only be done if you really need it till then I will see you in part two